Let's now associate some numbers to water quality. Your textbook presents the following values for potable water. Specifically, it identifies potable water as water having a coliform count less than 5,000 per 100 millimeter of water and a turbidity of less than 10 units. As an aside, do you remember what turbidity is? Your textbook then goes on to identify non-potable water as having the following values. A coliform count of more than 20,000 units per 100 millimeter of water and a turbidity greater than 250 units. What about Canada's guidelines for drinking water quality? According to Health Canada's website, which is linked for you in your course notes, potable water shall have a maximum acceptable concentration, or MAC, M-A-C, for total coliforms of zero, that's right, zero per 100 milliliters of water at the exit of a municipal treatment plant, and a nephilometric turbidity of less than 0 0.1 units. How do these values compare to the ones from your textbook? Moving on, what about non-potable values? Well, it turns out that the Government of Canada does not believe in quantifying non-potable water. Essentially, Canada's stand is that if water does not meet the potable requirements, it's simply not potable. That is, if water does not meet the requirements for drinking for human consumption, it's just not good. <laughs> it's not fit for human consumption. Out of curiosity, I've been mentioning coliform counts. Do you know how coliforms are actually counted? They are actually counted on petri dishes like these where samples, water samples, are cultured. And by that, I'm actually serious. They are counted on samples like these. 